How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a special debate show today. It's the North London debate. I've got an Arsenal fan next to me, good old Julian. What are you saying, Julian? I'm not that old. Well, I didn't mean old in that way. I, you know, it's a saying, good old Julian. And I'm not all that good either. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. Yeah. I, won't, I won't argue with you there. Yeah. Apart from that, it was very uh, apt description. Thank nice you. one, nice one. Obviously, I'm with Julian. We've got a couple of the ops across the table. We've got Henry on the left. How's it going, Henry? All good? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Ready to talk... Uh... Tottenham and Arsenal, mate. Ready yeah. to get involved. Seven days to go. And we've got Tobes. Familiar face. Yeah. What are you saying, Tobes? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm Chest good. out? Chest is still out, yeah. Yeah. Tough times never last. Tough people do. <laughs> you, heard, you heard my African brother. So, boy, let's see. Let's Wait, how, long, see. how long Tottenham fans have been saying tough times never last? Mate, you, you're, the one, you're the one that's been talking about winter for two years. And 60 yeah, years, you've been mate. your nuts off. So, <laughs> boy. 60 years? 61? Let's do the maths. <laughs> That's why it's good, old, good old Julian. Yeah. That's why it's good old Julian. But listen, obviously the North London derby is seven days away. Um, we both have a game in between that. But regardless of what happens in those games, Arsenal at home to Leeds and um, Tottenham away to Liverpool, that North London derby is set up to be something special. Quite possibly the biggest North London derby in quite a while. Since yeah. 2000 and when did we win Four? the yeah, since 2004. You won the the lane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Biggest one since then? Yeah. I'd oh. agree so. So much on the so. line as well. And especially teams. with the return of fans as well. The first yeah. time Arsenal fans will be in the yeah. new Tottenham first Stadium. North London derby in front of a full house there's as been, well. Yeah. There's been a few though. Like the one, the, literally this this exact same fixture and that evening fixture, 20, 2010, when we needed to beat you to get Champions League. I think we needed to beat uh, you. Yeah, we needed to beat Chelsea under Red Nap. Yeah, so there's been one or two, but without a doubt in the last maybe like... Eight, eight, nine years, this is probably the, the most important. The buzz for this one, for more anger is mad. And there was another one, um, 2006, um, where you came to us. The 1-1? One, one. Yeah, penultimate Robbie game Keane. at Highbury. Yeah, I remember you were 1-0 up and we equalised yeah, towards yeah. the end. Jammy goal, I remember yeah, that. And, <laughs> and that followed on from the uh, Jammy lasagna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so there has been a few big ones. I'll tell a lie, um, the one with Abamyang when he missed the penalty stoppage time as well, that, that one was, that was, yeah, that big. Was, was pivotal as well. That was but quite I, big. I don't think we realised so much at that time. Yeah. It was around March, wasn't it? February, March yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. As it happens, we missed out, I think, by one point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if he'd scored that penalty, justice would have prevailed. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're still using that penalty miss against Oba till this day because um, it was a big one. And like you said, at the moment, we didn't see it until the end of the season being a point off. Yeah, one point. Um, one point was the difference. Would have been massive. It would have been massive. Talking about the games we have coming up before the North London derby, it's, it's somewhat of a foregone conclusion to a lot of people out there that Tottenham are bound to lose or at least drop points and Arsenal are bound to, to beat Leeds and cut down the goal difference a bit. Um, Julian, let's start with you. Is that a foregone conclusion or do you potentially see a hiccup before this North London derby for either club? I was very, very confident after the West Ham game that that scenario would play out. Um, the closer I get to this weekend, uh, the more nervous I become because the more we kind of say it's a foregone conclusion, I think, as football fans, I mean, I've been a football fan, an Arsenal fan since 76, and I'm sure you guys have had similar experiences. When you expect something to happen, things come and uh, surprise you, not always in a in a good way. Um, we saw yeah. that recently with the Palace, Brighton, Southampton. Yeah, so... If I think about it rationally, then Liverpool should should smash Spurs. Should do. Um, they've got a terrible record at Anfield. Um, I can remember, I think, of all the years I've been watching Spurs play at Anfield on TV, um, I can only remember them winning there once. Now, they might have won there um, other times, but I can only remember one, I think, Sunday afternoon. No, it was a Saturday. I think it might have even been a cup game. They won 2-1. Other than that, pretty much every time they go to Anfield, they get beaten. Sometimes they play well, they get beaten. Sometimes they play badly, get beaten. But every time they go there, they seem to win. But the flip side to that, as I think something you said off air, was you're due a victory. Um, you know, strange things happen in football and it only takes one slip, one sending off, um, one own goal, something going your way. And luck kind of evens itself out over a season. Um, I'd say that Spurs got a little bit lucky last weekend with the fixtures. I thought we were getting lucky, but as it transpired, West Ham were very much up for it. Leicester, I think, made eight changes. Um, so, yeah, the closer it gets to that, that game, um, the more nervous I, I get and the more scenarios I keep sort of playing in my head, nightmare scenarios. 
of uh, Spurs actually getting a victory at, um, at Anfield. One variable that obviously I look at this season and that Man City away fixture was somewhat of a foregone conclusion as well. I remember yeah. I, I got clipped for saying it was a foregone conclusion, mm. but yes, Antonio Conte, look at your face. Mm. Antonio Conte. Um, what did I predict again? What, the Man City game? Yeah. He predicted a win, right? Oh. Oh, well, let's, see what you predict. let's see what you predict next week. Let's yeah. see what you predict next week. But Antonio Conte, listen, that's a world-class manager who's been at the top level of football for a long, well, uh, quite a while now. Um, I know how happy Todd was when Antonio Conte came in. I'm sure Henry, you was the same as well as the mm. vast majority of Tottenham fans. It's quite poss- it is the highest caliber manager Tottenham have ever had, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely in the Premier League terms, yeah. Yeah, definitely. yeah. He's, in, right. in he's, he's a league coach. Like he's, you look at what he's done. Um, he's won league titles I think he's won league title in every team he's managed professionally Juventus, Chelsea Inter, Inter Milan yeah. when, when he came to us it was it was it was, it was was a win-win situation for us because we either he either blows completely hot and the board invest money in like what well, they should do when you look at our, our current squad and then it's a win-win when you look at them, how he's going to manage players how some players have, have completely improved and yeah. with the mad props for what he did with Harry Kane as well when he come in, Harry Kane was in the gutter. He, he, he wanted that City move. He didn't get it. And then Conte's kind of rejuvenised his his Tottenham career. And yeah. like Son as well. I mean, he's about to hit 20 goals um, for the first time in, in the Premier League. And Conte's, them to have kind of like done what he did with Mourinho when they come in. They started hitting all the cylinders. But this game for me is, I think it's the biggest Spurs game we've had in a decade. So Are you much talking about the, the Arsenal, Arsenal or the, okay. the, so you're yeah. talking Premier League because you've obviously been yeah, to the Champions League final. It's, it's to, just, on yeah. just on Liverpool, right? It would be a Spurs thing to go and win there. Like you said, um, Man City. Yeah. The season before that, 6-1 at Old Trafford. Yeah. Um, which just, there's something in the back of my mind that whenever we play Liverpool, never goes right. You know, the Champions League final, 40 seconds in, we give away a penalty. You know, the last, I think it was the last season, season before, Firmino winner, dying minutes oh, yeah, off a yeah. corner. The, the Toby all of old own goal at Anfield at home when Lo also missed, missed in the last minute something never goes right it just it's our own stupidity but then the ball rolls to Liverpool mm-hmm. so but it would be a Spurs thing to go there and win you know yeah. but I'm not I'm not confident so are you projecting the same thing in terms of Arsenal will take sign from Leeds yeah yeah, three yeah points and you I mean, lot will drop points yeah I think you lot will I think you'll win convincingly you know Saka coming up against is it Furpo? They're, they're uh, fullback. Um, they've got a few injuries. You, you're quite. You've been fairly decent at home. I know you lost to Brighton, etc. But I think you'll win that. And then it's just can we get a result? Yeah. Liverpool go, going for four trophies this year. We, they're the closest team to doing a quadruple we've ever seen. You know, and it doesn't matter if they play Salah, Mane, Jota, Diaz, Firmino. Yeah. They're all they're all world class players. It's just can we? Get a result. Find a way. Tobes, um, how you like? How you feeling in terms of this weekend? Um, does does this weekend have a part to play in your confidence moving into Thursday? Like, if Liverpool were to turn you guys over comfortably as well, do you think that could have an effect on Thursday, or do you think Thursday in isolation, form goes out the window, North London derby, it means a hell of a lot. I think the latter, man. Um, I'm not really. I don't really put any weight on the Liverpool result um, towards how we will be at home. I think I just expect us under this manager um, with the improvements I've seen in recent months, I just expect us to to raise our game for this. I know we've not played well in, in recent weeks, but with so much on the line, I just, I, I expect a reaction irrespective of whatever result um, comes out of Liverpool. If we beat Liverpool, then great um, morale booster. Um, and from a psychological perspective, it strikes a blow in Arsenal's in Arsenal's chances because you're thinking, "Rah, like they've just beaten Liverpool. This is meant to be. Yeah. This is meant to be our, our reprieve." Um, That's why I now felt going after to, City. Exactly. Yeah. And now we're going to, to their ground. But if we lose, then yeah, it's not. It puts us in a in a in a poorer position to get top four. But it also makes us hungrier. It makes us look at that game as like absolutely you have to win. Nothing like failure is not an option. So for me. Um, I don't really put any weight towards this weekend's results. Um, I could see Arsenal, I don't expect Arsenal to lose to Leeds, but imagine if Arsenal lost to Leeds, I wouldn't then all of a sudden say, oh no, that means that they're going to come into this game any weaker. No, no, no chance. I think Arsenal are going to be up for it. And I think we have to be up for it as well. Next week means what it means regardless of this, this weekend's results. Yeah. Um, you mentioned pressure. 
Julian, let's start with you. The question I was going to pose is who needs top four more, but I guess that question is the same as is, as asking who's the, who's the pressure on going into that no, game. I, th- I think Tottenham need it more. I, I agree. I, I really do. I th- um, if you look at the predictions for where Arsenal um, were supposed to be this season, we're well ahead of expectations. Um, because our expectations have been hired, it's, it's increased, it's put the pressure on. Um, you look at sort of football pundits, I think the BBC um, have got about 18 pundits and pretty much every one of those um, didn't put Arsenal in the top four. Um, they didn't put Spurs as well, though. None of them put Spurs. But then as soon as Conte came, then the expectations were increased. Um, I've been quite surprised by Levy's appointments the last last few with Mourinho. Um, obviously, I'm sort of taking out um, the one that, that lasted two seconds. Um, but you had Mourinho and now you've got Conte. Does it worry you? Um, it doesn't in the long term. You know, the way I look at football is, is more long term, maybe because I've sort of been around a lot more long term. Um, but those kind of appointments are, we need it now. And these managers have a history of not sticking around for that long. So they get short-term success and then they kind of move on. Um, so did it worry me that you bring in someone to get short-term success? With Mourinho, yes, it did. But thankfully, he didn't get any type of short-term success. I'm hoping it'll be the same for Conte. Um, but long term, that doesn't worry me at all because what they're doing, I mean, we talk about the project at Arsenal, the process. The process. The, the, the process. process. That, that word is rinsed and repeated. Watch, watch when your club yeah. start coming out with it in a yeah. year or two. Yeah, and I'll, st- I'll say <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> you, 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 I've, just, said, I've said it, I'm tired of these projects. I'm, t- I'm tired of hearing the word project. But, just sign good players and just improve. Like, well, why is that mean, so what difficult? What do you mean project? All we hear about is project youth, right? Yep. But it's just Saka and Smith Rowe. Let's be honest. Oh, we've, got, we've got a lot more than that. Uh, yeah, a lot of our like, team. It's, just, it's two players it, well, it's, that it's, are, are this whole process project. No. I think people include Tommy Asu, Ramsdale in that. Exactly. Ben White, yeah, the ben 20, White. 22s, 23s yeah. as if well. You look at the but I get what you mean in terms of youth yeah. for me is 22 and under. Odegaard is like well, like well. Academy Odegaard graduates, etc. They're, they're like the main two, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit more than that. You look at Arsenal's team, they've got the youngest team in, in the Premiership. Um, mm. With Spurs, talking about the pressure, is... They have to, for me, Conte will leave if they don't get top four. Whereas Arteta won't and we move on till next season. Whereas I think Spurs could be starting again. You know, that the whole thing, PSG come calling, he hasn't got Champions League football, does he fancy it? I wouldn't have thought he would. I think he'll be off. So that's why I think it is actually more important for Spurs to get there. Whereas we have overachieved. Um, the team can then build again for next season, whereas I think you'd have to start again. I think from a financial perspective, of course, it means way more for Spurs. Um, Champions League means we have more money to spend on players, whereas we've seen in Arsenal have not been in Europe's elite competition for, what, four, five, five years, years now? Yeah, five and the spending, years. the spending hasn't stopped. The spending has, has probably increased, yeah. if, if anything. So we are way more dependent on the riches that that will bring than Arsenal. And Spurs fans don't like me saying this and I'll keep saying it. We don't have Arsenal's name. People keep, people keep saying, Thanks. people keep saying that our oh, Arsenal are muddied. Yeah, Arsenal are muddied to a certain extent, but they still, they still have an element of pulling power that Spurs don't have, which is why players like Thomas Partey will sign for Arsenal with no, t- will leave a, a club that literally just finished, what, top three in La Liga, yeah. Yeah. Champions League football, to go to a team that are playing Europa League and finish eighth in the season. That's that's what you call pool. Spurs don't have that natural pool. We don't have that historical success to bring us those players. And being in the Champions League gets us gets us that extra incentive that we can offer to players. So look at some of the players we've been linked with this summer like, uh, already. Pau Torres, uh, obviously that's another one. Um, Tielemans. These guys. Forget it, it, about forget about um, forget about the fact that it's Spurs. What's their requirements yeah, to yeah. leave? They want Champions League football. Yeah. So for you to sign these players, you need to be in Europe's elite competition. And if you're not in Europe's elite competition, it makes it harder to sign players of that caliber. And then the last point, of course, that Julian's mentioned is uh, is the obvious point: Conte. Mm. If we can't give him, if we can't put the sufficient uh, the sufficient funding behind his plans, 
because we don't make Champions League qualification and we can't get this player, we can't get X player. Of course, it increases his chances of leaving because what's the one thing that he needs? He needs full backing. He needs the club to be pulling in his in his direction. If that doesn't happen, he'll go. He'll bounce. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's also someone else that might bounce as well, which is Harry Kane. Um, is, he gonna, is he going to stick leave. around for a, another season of non-Champions League football? I don't, I don't think he go. If it, thing he is, could. I think he could. Last year was his market, right? It was, you had Kane and Lukaku, they were the two. Now it's Haaland and Bappe. Obviously, Dusan Vlahovic has gone now. They were the kind of the three main young, young strikers. I don't think Kane goes now. I don't think he does. Now that Conte's United there, decided to... Even United, there's a lot more problems than just their squad. Yeah. Like they're, they're, that's a 10-year, can we turn this club around and get back up to where Man City and Liverpool are? Because at the moment, them two are 10 years ahead of United. Mm -hmm. The thing with, with Harry Kane is now, now you've got a manager like Conte, an elite manager. I know we had Mourinho, and, but Mourinho was kind of on the, the decline. And Senor Conte has come off the back of winning the Serie A of Inter Milan. So if we say hypothetically we do get the Champions League and we, we invest... Harry Kane will stay. The, the, scare, the, the thing that's in the back of my mind is um, if we say hypothetically you guys get it and we don't, if Kane and Conte leave, where does that put us? Because some will be the franchise player, will be the main guy. We're not, like you said, we don't have the pull, we don't have the name. Then where do we go as a football club from there? Because at the moment, players wanting to play on the Mourinho, players wanting to play on the Conte, they're, they're pulling players in from the Champions League. It puts us in a good position. But if we don't have all that, then we, we're going to go spiralling down. You look at our recruitment. Even when we did get in the Champions League, some of the buyers we made were absolutely wild. Like, uh, Lo Celso. Mm. Undombele didn't work out. So then you can flip it around and say, OK, if we get in the Champions League, are we going to make the right buyers? But, that's the, but, that's the, but then that's, that's down to the people that are... That's down to the people that recruit the players. That's not down to the competition itself. We all know what Champions League brings. You want to be... All of this talk about, oh, why would you want to be... Listen, um... All this talk about oh yeah, um, being in Champions League is overrated if you don't win it and stuff. I've no, never, I've never, I've yeah. never bought into that. As a fan as well, as a fan, I want to go to. I, I, I yeah, love Champions League nights. Yeah, yeah. The champion, some of the, some of the champion, some of the Champions League nights I've had at Spurs have been some of the best nights I've had as a Spurs fan. Yeah. So why wouldn't I want to have that feeling again, even if we don't win it? So, yep, I absolutely agree with that. Listening to you guys and, and the gist of the Arsenal fans all across the year, moving into this North London derby, yeah. Is it right for me to say that this 90 minutes next Thursday is more than just 90 minutes for Tottenham? It's more than just top four for Tottenham because you guys are worried about more than that. You're, you guys are worried yeah. about if it doesn't happen this season, all of it could fall yeah, apart. It's, 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 it's everything to us. I think, yeah, 100%. Uh, sorry, sorry. Henry. Right, I think, cool. I think you, you guys, um, you know my thoughts on Arteta. I don't really rate him highly, but you're set on Arteta. We know he's not going anywhere next. Yeah, season. Yep. We know he's not going anywhere next season. And we spoke about the, the the funding. This is a guy who was given 150 million in the summer. This is a guy who was given 100 100 million the summer before. Arsenal have bought into his way and are spending on yeah. on are his spending process. on players that he wants. Yeah, that's set in stone for next season. That's not set in stone next season for Antonio yeah, Conte. Yeah. We don't know if Spurs are going to buy the players Conte wants. We don't know if Antonio Conte is going to stay if we don't get Champions League qualification. So getting top four is paramount for Tottenham this season, for sure. I wonder, like, the next question I have on the list, and it kind of falls off the back of that. Did you want to mention something on that? No, I was, I was just going to say, like with the uncertainty of Antonio Conte, you look at how quickly things can change. I think we've had 18 managers under Enoch, which is a 20-year period. <laughs> yeah. Longest one, obviously, Poch, yeah, and that yeah. was what five, five, six years. Five, five and a half. Years, so it changes so quickly. I mean, we had we we, we went from Nuno Mourinho to I know we went on a bit, a bit of a wait for it, but then we went to um, Nuno, then Conte. If he goes in the summer, it's another manager. So we're buying players to fit Conte's system. He doesn't want to. They want to scrap bit getting young players to like Deli Ali to build them up and make them into better players. We need players that are ready now. Yeah. So if we do all that under Conte and then he goes, we 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 start all over again. At least with of the Arsenal way at the moment, you're build, you're buying into Arteta's process and you're buying players that he wants to, young players, so you can all mould them together at the right time. Yeah. With yeah. us, it's constantly chopping and changing every five months. So if I ask who has the brighter future, it, it, it sounds like it might be difficult for you guys to answer without knowing the result next weekend or next week Thursday. But for us, from what you said earlier, Julian, and like I said, the gist yep. around Arsenal fans, it seemed that win, lose or draw in that North London derby and top four or fifth, sixth position, the club, the fans seem very much behind Mikel Arteta where 
it's on it's on the country over at Tottenham. If you don't win that, if you don't get top four, Conte might be out of the door and and Harry there Kane is no might future. Be out of the door to, and, and then you're back to square one. But then at There's the same future, time, yeah. at the same time, who has the brighter future? You guys could use bringing in Antonio Conte. You guys can use breaking your transfer record in the last couple of years, moving into the big stadium. Exactly. These are things yeah. you can use in, in order shown, to highlight a brighter future. We've shown future. ambition. We've, we've shown, like, if there's right or wrong, and as much as I criticise him, I hate, I, I absolutely hate some of the decisions that he's made. But you can't say that these guys haven't, like, aspired for more like you look at the managers that they brought in they are clearly they clearly want Spurs to, to go to go another gear but they just don't have the capacity to understand that it doesn't just work mm, like yeah. that you don't just bring in a manager and his honky dory you need to improve this team you can't just expect the manager to work miracles with, with teams that have been lagging and lagging and falling behind in comparison to their peers are you talking about Levy I'm talking about Levy that's, yeah. that's why but he's putting Paratici yeah. but he's also put yeah. in a fantastic infrastructure you've got, yeah, a, you've got yes. the training credit to pitch, him and what he did with that stadium from a commercial point of view I think was outstanding um, you know the, the deal that he's got um, the fixed interest rate that they're paying it doesn't necessarily have to um, sacrifice pa uh, player I agree. acquisitions. I so agree. he's put a fabulous infrastructure in place to to make you successful. He, ha he has, and, but, but and the, it still hasn't worked. But the team, yeah, yeah, but that, that, you, that's, you that's can't, just you can't it. have a fantastic house and, and no furniture in it. That's, that's you can't have all this stadium said. and this and this training ground, but the players on the pitch are not representing that. You know, you, you, at the moment it's. We've got, we've got so many issues. We're, we're slowly identifying. Then we're like, we've, we've identified we need wing backs and we're buying better players. And that's why I think he's brought in Paratici because you've got a football man now making footballing decisions. Whereas before, Daniel Levy's an investor and a, and a, well, a banker trying to make f like footballing brain decisions. And then we, we've we've made some awful decisions. But then now he's trying to, he's seen that and he's going, okay, let's bring in someone who can who can change and do that. And to be fair, we've got rid of a lot of our deadwood the last couple of, do you agree enough. so? Not, Not enough, enough but, but we're, we, we're going down the right path. I don't know. Yes, the jury's out for me. Um, I think we've we've got rid of some some players that needed to go, but there's still so many players in this team that need to go and still haven't been binned. Mm. And in addition to that, um, I want to give Paratici credit for the for for the fact that you were able to help us bring in someone like Conte, that you were able to get us Romero, that you were able to get us Kulisevsky and Benton Benton Cole. Cole, yeah. But then I can't because I'm like, you also brought us Emerson. You also hired, you also pushed for Nuno in the summer. Um, maybe something happened behind the scenes of Antonio Conte um, <laughs> and Levy to stop him from, from joining the club. But you also wanted to bring in Gattuso. You didn't sign a strike, a backup striker in the summer. You didn't sign a right wing back in January. There's been so many missteps this with this hierarchy. And, and, and it's very hard. Like you said, all those good things about Levy, they're true. But it's very hard to think about that when I'm still seeing the same group of players do the same things week in, week out, and we're seeing marginal change. It's just papering over cracks. That's, that's, that's what I think all it is at the moment. Yeah, that's what I've felt about the Cron case for years, and that's where a lot of the But at least they're, 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 they're showing about. some ambition with, you, without you being in the top four, you still sign a Bamyang, Lacazette, Ozil. No, we was in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bamiang and Lacazette yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But you've, you, without you being in, in in Champions League, you're still getting the 125 million, the 150 million by Ramsdale, Ben White. Whereas us, it all depends on the, on our transfer budget, everything. Yeah, well, that's that that's been kind of something new to Arsenal fans though, because when you guys moved into the stadium and then you broke your transfer record and then you went on to keep Harry Kane. Me in particular and yeah, an like, abundance of Arsenal fans look back like at this? when we moved into the Emirates, we sold every single yeah. player to yeah, pay it off. Right ones. You walked you know? so we could run, basically. Yeah, and Daniel Levy is shrewd at that. But then there was those sort of things. There was a situational difference. Um, yeah, of course, it was so different it was, times. Yeah, different times. Arsenal were extremely unlucky that when they moved into the Emirates, the, the way that it was structured was the sale of flats. Um, and it was 2007 and there was a massive property crash. Um, it was an unfortunate time, um, whereas Levy did well. He's an opportunity to capitalised on very low interest rates. Yeah. Um, so he kind of understood the market, but some things, have a good a business person you are, the situation can unfold that you can't control it. And when Arsenal made that move, it was probably the worst time they could have made that move in financial times. But, you know, fair play to Levy. He's done well on so that. So let's answer the question, though. Who has the brighter future? I know what Julian's going to say, so I won't ask him. Well, Sitting here right now, seven days before this North London derby, 
off of the work I guess Tottenham have done since Conte's come in and off the work Arsenal done since Arteta's come in who has the brighter future I don't think it's I don't think it's cut and dry I think no. the, the obvious the, the, the neutrals obvious answer will say oh look Arsenal have got a, young the team, average young, young team young manager so they're up with trajectory but we've literally got top three managers top four top three top four managers on the planet Managing us, yeah. best, and, best and, number nine in the world, and and we've got we've got Harry Kane, we've got Ben Zuma Sun- might have something to say about that. But nah. <laughs> it's he's top three, Harry Kane, top three strikers in the world for Fair. me. I'll give so, you that. Ben Zuma's doing it with elite players, don't so, so, yeah. My, my my point is, you've got Antonio Conte, you've got Harry Kane, you've got Sun Young Min, and now you've signed a, a, a top class centre back in Romero. You've got Kulusevski, you've got Benton Core. So there are some pieces there that you can work with. You even, uh, your fans won't rate him as well. I don't think he's an elite player, but you've got even a, a local boy, Oliver Skip, who's actually come into the team and cemented a place in the team and has actually done relatively well this season in comparison to his quality as a player. So I don't think it's cut and dry that you can just say, oh, Arsenal, Arsenal on the upward, upward curve because all you need to do is add a couple more. If, if, if Spurs get Champions League, all you literally need to do is add a couple more pieces. And this Conte guy has shown you what he can do. He's literally shown you what that, he can give do me, with dance give as well. me, give me the pieces yeah. I want, and I'll take you somewhere. He's done it at Chelsea. He's done it at Juventus. He did it at Inter Milan. If Spurs give him the funding that we need and we get top four, who's to say that? Nah, who's to say that we it's don't? It's not improve? cut and dry yeah. because if we'd done this two weeks ago, it would have been a very different mood after Arsenal lost those three games and Tottenham managed to capitalise not only in points but goal difference too. We would have been talking a very different. Um, debate here mm. I think the, the brighter future would have been more on your side because there was a lot of doubt amongst Arsenal fans well, um, not, not all Arsenal not fans all. <laughs> there, there was a couple <laughs> Arsenal fans across the world a yeah, couple, couple that still after those three mm-hmm. losses said we're going to go win the next three games I've managed to bring one alongside me yeah. here I don't know where the other one is out there let so us know in the comment section Nigeria, below yeah. yeah he might be still out in Nigeria yeah. enjoying yeah. <laughs> but I, you I, did I, predict I, it I, yeah, I did. when you look at the futures at the moment I probably would edge it not just saying I'm a Spurs fan us purely in the managerial front. I think when you look at the, the prospects you, you've got come through recent years, Saka smith Rowe, like I said, Martinelli, you've got Ramsdale and you've got Gabriel and Ben White, but the, the, you, there's no killer instinct going forward. Like there's no out and out goal scorer. That's the thing. If, if I said to you off stream earlier, if you swapped and gave us your creativity and you had Harry Kane, both you fixed both problems. But now Tobes has said, we've, we're slowly building a spine. If we get Champions League, hypothetically, and you had a few more puzzles to the puzzles to the jigsaw, we're cooking with gas. You yeah. got top five coaches in the world in his prime. You know, it's a different. It's now it, or yeah. never for Tottenham, yeah. we, especially with the, with what's going on. All the revenue you're going to get now. Now COVID's finally passing. You know, a full a full season with with fans. All the extra revenue you can get for the NFL. I know fans don't like it, but all the concerts. Levy's very clever on that side of things. It's just yeah. implementing it onto the pitch. Yeah. So I think, obviously, a lot of Arsenal fans will say, look at the youngsters we've got, but it's, I, I, I'd edge it to Tottenham on it just because yeah. of the managerial but, front. But then if you're saying the only thing Arsenal are lacking is a great striker, then surely it's got to be easier for us to just buy a it's great striker that, yeah. in, but then, in the summer and then we're sorted. But at the, at the moment in the market, it's, it's very difficult if you don't get the Champions League football. I know that you've got the pool and you've got the name, but the manager, I mean, would you rather play for Arteta or Conte? Yeah, but the but the, but the, the catch-22 of that is Arteta, whether we like him or not, is staying at Arsenal yeah. this summer. Stability. There's still, there's still uncertainty of Antonio Conte. Yeah, and, that's, and, that, and, and I think and that, he, that's and why yeah. I don't think it's cut and dry. <laughs> and he has a history of staying a couple of years, did it at Chelsea, he's done it pretty much everywhere he's gone. He hasn't really stuck around. He goes there, he gets a bit of success. The next season after that, he upsets a few people and then he's off. So it depends what yeah. you call the bright future. If you're talking about a bright future in the next few weeks... Give me that success, it's, please. Yeah, it's a little bit... <laughs> give me that success. It's, it's more... What do you know about success? Predict. I said, give yeah. me that success, yeah. please. <laughs> please. please Tony will make me like. sick. He's, he already <laughs> makes me sick with no success. Imagine Tottenham start winning things. Please, God, don't let that happen. Yeah. But listen... But if you're looking at the next, next five years... I would say that at some point, even if Conte gets Champions League football, will he stay beyond the next season after that? Whereas you can see Arteta, um, you know, really building something. Then if we get the Champions League funding and we buy the right blocks for the swings again, and then we get Champions League again, you know, we, there's only I think there's only two windows we've spent over like 100 million, and both of those were champion, either the Gareth Bale money or when we got Champions League. So we showed the ambition. Undon Bale at the time was a great buy. 
he was an unbelievable player at, at Lyon. And that's the sort of bias we need to make, yeah. but with a, someone, a footballing person, making the decision. So if we can get Champions League a couple of years and you've got Kane and Son in their prime at the moment. So how old are they? I Both think Son's 29, Kane's about to be 29. Yeah. So, like, Son's the top, uh, the top, him and Salah and Mbappe are the top scoring wingers in the world at the moment. So, like, he's at his prime. So, and Kane, what he's doing in, as a number 10 and a number 9, you just got to add a few more puzzles. If we get, like, another another commanding centre back and another midfielder and decent wing backs, then you've got an actual team. It's that you're missing, so, uh, what, Arsenal uh, uh, and Arsenal missing what Arsenal have, and Arsenal are missing what you This is what I'm saying. You've got the creativity yeah. in Smith, Rowe, Saka. And the young supporting yeah. cast. And you that have the stars, yeah, If you put no Kane support. in the Arsenal team, you'd be third right we, now. We do have, we do have some support. So it's, I, I get the point you're making. I think, I think one key thing for me as well is because the worry is if Antonio Conte stays and he does win, he's going to, the, the ripple effect is he, he brings in some players that aren't people's cup of tea and they're, they're lumbered with the club. But the signings that I've seen us make, well, some of the signings I've seen us make this season are signings that I feel like you can play in, under any manager, any system. Like Kulisevsky, I don't think he's he's just a player that you can you can only see him thriving under Conte. Same for Benton Core. He played under what, like two, three yeah, different managers at Juventus. And then Romero, I don't even need to, I don't, you know how much I rate yeah, this yeah. guy. Like he plays in the two for Argentina, plays in the three for Spurs, can play on the front foot, can play um, compact. He's, a, he's, Spurs, he's, he's both and he's like a ball playing defender as well. Furthermore, yeah. Spurs just, I, I know, I'm all for buying into Antonio Conte's star, but on top of that, Spurs actually just need to start buying good players. Buy good players and your team improves. It's, it, it, honestly, it, it, why, it doesn't need to be more, more complicated than that. Just buy good players in their positions and your team improves. Well, we'll see if they do that come the summer. We'll see who we're playing with Champions League football come the summer. We're going to do this again next week, Monday time to, you know, get those Liverpool and Leeds fixtures out of the way and then and then put our necks on the line with a more defined prediction. But I just want to go around next week, Thursday, North London derby. Henry, you confident? Yeah, Tottenham will win. Tobes, you confident? Yep, Tottenham will win. Julian, confident? What? Confident Tottenham are going to win? No. Well, I mean the other way. Oh, the other way. Um, it's going to be really tight. I, I, th I think they are being a bit disingenuous saying that they are totally confident because... No, I am confident. Be, if, when's, I mean, when's the last time you're I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tight it's, game. It's, it's going to be really tight. So that's the thing. I'm not saying that Arsenal are going to go and smash them. It's going to be really tight. Really tight. It could go either way. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. Spurs are going to smash you. I think I think we'll win the game 2-1. But what yeah, I'm saying is I think we'll win. I said 1-0. Yeah. Once, come right. 90 minutes... I'm expecting Spurs to win. And if they don't win, then I'll be massively disappointed. Well, I wasn't asking for predictions, but you've yeah. gone 1-0. You've gone 2-1. What are you saying, Julian? I would say it'll be a draw. The, the I think that'll be good enough for us. The thing us. that gives, gives me the confidence is this is the first North London derby in our new ground, in a full house. And our record at home, again, I think the last time we won was that Rosicky goal. Was it 1-0? Yeah. 2014, yeah. 2013? 2014. Yeah, after about 20 seconds. Yeah, and then the rest of the game was completely dead. I remember yeah. that game. I, I, sat, I sat down, literally if, if sat the, down and I just see him score this Hawitz out. If, so if, these, players, came in the crowd at the end, didn't if these players can't get up for a North London derby under Antonio Conte in front of a full house, knowing that what's on the line, then it's yeah, over. But the Arsenal team will be up for it as well. I think it's, it's a lot more on the line be. for us though. because Spurs fans need to be up for yeah, it as well. This, the atmosphere will be electric. Because the there. Arsenal fans are definitely going to be They're going to be up for it. That's something all season. The Arsenal fans have really supported, like you guys say, the process and the project and Arteta and the, the away young fans, team. You mean, yeah. The home Trevor. fans too. I mean, the Emirates has been different as well this yeah, season, but the away fans in particular have been very, very vocal. You've gone with a draw. I'm going to sit on that same fence. Shock. Tobes knows about that fence. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with a draw. I might stick my neck on the line next week. Let me see what Liverpool do with Tottenham. Let's see what Arsenal yeah. do with Leeds. And um, people, I'm going to put channel links in the description below. Henry. Toby's channel Julian doesn't have one yet he might have one soon we'll put that in there as well when he does you thinking about making a channel no I'm just happy to be here with you there you go he's happy to be here with me good old Julian yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. hope you guys have enjoyed seven days to go on to the North London derby still a couple fixtures after those fixtures we're going to give you guys another one of these let us know your thoughts in the comment section below are you confident any score lines out there key battles i want to hear it all let me know in the comment section below i'll be going through replying to some comments out there help the engagement and whatnot love for the love people hit the like button on your way out come on arsenal
Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.